Anthony Joshua says that he has made some drastic changes to his lifestyle in the wake of his loss to Andy Ruiz Jr. And of course, in the build-up to his rematch with Ruiz Jr. on December 7th in Saudi Arabia. So I'm going to quote Anthony Joshua directly here. He says, there will be no aftershock after the first fight. I'll be smarter. Getting knocked down was good. If I am smarter, I know I can pull it off. I don't know. I don't want to say it will be Joshua 2.0. I know what I was doing before was working. I just have to tweak little things and I'll be perfect. Losing speeds up that process. I have made some drastic changes, lifestyle stuff, family circles, what is important, priorities. The effect, uh, excuse me, the effort it takes to stay on the street and narrow is challenging. I have to understand I am aiming to be a top athlete. Boxing was always the easiest part for me. The struggle was always keeping my life in check. If I can do that, the boxing will fall into place. There were distractions away from the ring, but I never complained. He beat me fair and square. I had those distractions and now I have to make it better for myself. So those are the words of Anthony Joshua. Now, we can only speculate as to what he means with regards to lifestyle changes and, you know, what could have been distracting him outside the ring. But I remember watching a video of Anthony Joshua. I think it might have been Sky or maybe it was on AJ's YouTube channel. And he had a big cut. He, he was he was shadow boxing in, in one of these uh, videos. And he had a cut on his knuckle and his knuckle was bleeding. And I guess the, uh, the interviewer asked him, is that from training? And he was like, no, nah, it's not from training. He said it was from hitting a wall or, or something like that because of frustrations with his family. Now, Anthony Joshua is of Nigerian descent, you know, Nigerian parents. And anybody who's from Africa or the Caribbean will probably be familiar with having you know, we, we call it beggy relatives, all right? People who are beggy, beggy. You have, you have certain relatives, friends, etc., extended family back home in certain Caribbean countries and probably most African countries who have this perception that if you live in the UK or, you know, America or anywhere in the West, that somehow you've made it. And some of them can look at you as if you're some type of ATM, that you owe them money, that since you've made it, you're supposed to give them gifts and, you know, send them phones and all this kind of stuff. And that's if you're just working a regular nine to five. If you are somebody like Anthony Joshua, and, and by the way, when it comes to, uh, you know, having beggy relatives, certainly with a lot of African people I know, when they go back to Africa, they stay in hotels rather than staying with relatives because a lot of them feel like they can't trust their relatives. Okay, that's how bad it is with, with a lot of the envy and whatnot. Um, and that's just if you're working a regular nine to five. If you're a multimillionaire like Anthony Joshua, I can't even imagine the number of Nigerian relatives who must have come out of the woodwork since Anthony Joshua made it big and have been clawing at him to try and get money. Now, I'm not trying to disrespect his family or anything like that. I just know how it is. Yeah. And, you know, which exact family members are, are begging him and putting pressure on him? I don't know. But if you immerse yourself in that family life, and people are scrambling to try and get hold of your money, it can be stressful. You know, it can be distracting and what have you. And if you're not fully focused on a particular opponent and you've got all this family stuff going on around you, it can bother you. Now, I'm not using that as an excuse for his loss to Ruiz. What I'm saying is that this might have been going on long before the Ruiz fight, you know, this family stuff that AJ's alluded to. Uh, perhaps it was going on during the uh, Povetkin camp. Perhaps it was going on during the Takam camp. I'm not saying that's the reason why he got caught with shots in those uh, particular fights. I think there were many reasons, but 
potentially, you know, family issues outside the ring could have contributed. So, and as we all know, boxing is uh, to a very large degree mental as much as it is physical, perhaps even more mental than physical. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of AJ we get. But the issue is here, you know, AJ says there's not going to be any aftershock, you know, so he, he thinks there's not going to be any, uh, he won't be gun shy or traumatized from what happened to him against Ruiz. Now, AJ has been stopped before. He got stopped in the amateurs. He's been dropped before, right? He got uh, dropped in the amateurs, also got dropped by Dylan White in the amateurs, um, as well as, I think, being in the European Championships or something like that when he got stopped by a guy called Nista. He's been knocked out in sparring, as we know, by David Price, and he may have been down other times in sparring. The fact that AJ's been hurt and dropped as many times as he has might actually, in a, in a funny way, help him in, in this rematch. And the reason I say that is because if he's been dropped and knocked out before, in sparring and, you know, in amateur fights and whatnot. He's come back from that. He's been able to build himself back up mentally, regain his focus, regain his confidence, and go in there at a very high level and still win fights, despite the fact that he's been dropped and knocked out before. That right there could bode well for this rematch for him. Maybe he knows exactly how to get over these things. Maybe he's not somebody who's going to be, you know, really shaken up psychologically from getting knocked out the way that he was. And at the end of the day, he was dropped four times, but he wasn't flat on his back out cold. You know, it wasn't like Lennox Lewis against Hassim Ratman, who was, you know, very nearly out cold in the Ratman fight. Anthony Joshua finished the fight on his feet. You know, the referee waved it off after a miscommunication. So, you know, we'll see, man. I watched the video, some American guy on YouTube, who said that Anthony Joshua is braver than Lennox Lewis. So stop the Lewis comparisons because he's actually braver. And I don't know, I think Anthony Joshua is a more naturally aggressive character than Lennox Lewis. I know Anthony Joshua comes across as very cool and stuff like that, but a lot of that, as we know, is this media front that Anthony Joshua will often put on. But I think he is a naturally more aggressive boxer, although Lewis was aggressive early in his career. Um, you know, perhaps AJ is even more aggressive. And perhaps, again, AJ maybe is stronger in some ways mentally, potentially. I'm not saying this for sure, that he may be able to get over a humiliating defeat better than, better than Lennox Lewis did uh, when Lewis first suffered his... Uh, we first lost his O as a professional to Oliver McCall. Lewis was a wreck, you know, when he came back against Lionel Butler, who was a, a journeyman. Lewis was so gun shy. And I mean, if they'd put Lewis in there against the top five heavyweight uh, instead of Lionel Butler, I mean, he definitely would have lost as far as I'm concerned. So Anthony Joshua is going to need to be stronger than that. He's going to need to have the confidence. And as I say, if he's got previous experiences of being knocked out, and he's come back from those experiences, regained his confidence very quickly, then, uh, you know, he could draw on that to help him through this Ruiz rematch. So, going to be interesting to see. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, do you think Anthony Joshua just needs to tweak a few little things with regards to his boxing to beat Ruiz? Or do you think he needs drastic changes to beat Ruiz? Um, I personally think he can beat Ruiz by tweaking a few little things, yeah? Uh, it, they have to be the right things, though. And he could tweak certain things that make it, you know, that make Ruiz more dangerous. <laughs> you know, I've spoken about this in other videos, that there, there's the danger that AJ and McCracken could throw the baby out with the bathwater. They could change certain things they did in the first fight which they actually don't need to change, things that were actually working well. You know, that is one of the dangers. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, 
you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalog of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.